Hey, this is Andy with RS Experience, and in today's video, I'm gonna be speaking with Jamie Bopp of Dundon Motorsports. Hey, I'm Andy, a high-performance car enthusiast with a passion for well-engineered automobiles. I love to drive mountain roads with like-minded enthusiasts, along with sharing driving tips and techniques in my Porsche GT3 RS and BMW M2 CS. So suspension, um, I know your your aero, you had mentioned the aero. So I'm guessing is that, that'll be, is that dive planes? Is it stuff under the car? Is that rear wing? Leave the wing alone? Just we got to do some it. analysis on it. So uh, one of the tells is uh, the wing, let's see. 992 cup teams, you know, we're, we're working with as well, helping them with power packages and, and these kinds of things as, as the, as the opportunity comes, uh, which by the way, I didn't know this, a uh, couple of the guys in international GT who are competing have all of our stuff on their cup cars. Awesome. Um, and I, it's more of them than I realized, and they're all competing to, to win. And so one of the marketing pushes we're going to, we're going to use to our advantage here is uh, you know, there's a lot of guys who make exhausts and a lot of people ask, what's the best one? Well, to me, the best one is the one that goes and wins races. So the only ones that I know of that are doing that are Dundon and Eminem. And Eminem is like the grandfather in Germany that has been doing it forever. You don't see Acra out there doing it. You don't see JCR out there doing it. You don't see Skull out there doing it. You don't see Fabspeed out there doing it. They put our stuff on the car because it works. Good so for you. That's we're going to start using that yeah. and, and really kind of trumpeting it. One of the reasons that uh, we have a cup car coming. So, so, um, so we get the, you know, the, the arrow bits and whatnot on the car. And then, so bef I guess before as part of the, I'll call it next gen of exhaust, say for the 992, is it basically getting a hold of that car and just, you know, kind of, looking at, all right, how do they have this thing? You know, what have they tweaked? Kinda, they, yeah. So 992, we, we've had a couple of looks. I'll, I'll continue on the arrow front so that we okay. don't get too disjointed amongst uh, all, all the things. So we have to scan the car. We have right, to I saw one video right. where you do that, all the little yep. dot yep. things. So we have, we will, we'll try, I'm, I'm planning on doing a complete YouTube uh, 992 build if you will, oh, nice. where we get the car, we scan the car, we disassemble the car, and we we go through every step of what we're doing, how we do it, why we do it, what's going on when we do it, that kind of thing, both educational and kind of understand how the parts are made and why the parts are made, right? Some of them are just beauty, right? They're just take a plastic part, make it out of carbon. There you go. Because it's shiny and pretty now. Great. You know, right. wing end caps. They're not going to materially change anything other than now they're made out of carbon. Groovy. Right. But uh, what else can we do, right? Can gurney flaps, how's a gurney flap work? What's it do? Why do we make it? Yada, yada, yada. Dive planes, what do they do? How do they work? You know, we can we can talk a little bit. I was about... impressed. I was amazed. I shouldn't say impressed, amazed that I think Dan DeSalle had him on his GT3 RS and uh, mm -hmm. at a track here. I don't know. He had him on there and then somebody else was doing a test. I saw some video where it was like, with them on, with them off, with them on, and then something in the back with the wing adjusted. And then, I, but like on a wow. very sh short track, it was a 1.3, right. one and three quarter mile track. There was like a 1.2 second difference with, I didn't realize that those um, so planes the, the, actually- The dive planes, so the, the, the misconception with a dive plane is that it's, only work that the air is only working off of the surface area of the dive plane because they're very small, right? Right. In reality, what a dive plane is doing is creating a tornado on the side of the car. So tornadoes have low pressure zones in the middle of them, right? That's what creates the twist. So if I can get the air to twist, I get a low pressure zone inside of it. This is vastly simplified because you can actually sometimes get it to twist. So there's a high pressure in there, but that's fancy. We're not going right, to, that's right. formula okay. one vortice <laughs> generator crap. We're not going to worry about that for now. So you get the dive planes and you get the air across the car to start to twist as it's going down the length of the car. And in reality, what you're trying to do is counteract the fact that you've got a spinning tire and wheel in the front wheel well, that's 
creating a bunch of turbulence and high pressure that's lifting the body of the car. Right. Hence, there's vents on the fender yep. to try and relieve that. The dive planes do that plus some more, right? So they have a little bit of impingement. So direct downforce as, as speed goes up a little bit, not much, uh, but they mainly work by sucking high pressure out of the wheel wells. Interesting. All right. I learned something new here. So that's, that's how that works. A gurney flap, uh, the, the little L piece. Yeah, that little, goes on I the know. Wing. Little tiny thing, right? Just a tiny thing. But in essence, the, the thing about a, a wing on a car is it, the working surface isn't the top. It's the bottom of the wing. That's why you see swan necks for cars because right. it's all smooth, right? It's more efficient. You get more of that working area for the same amount of drag. So that means you get more lift or downforce, negative lift, if you will, for the amount of drag that that wing produces. What a gurney does is it kind of fools the air because it stagnates the, the air that's going across the top makes it stop, come up, and then have to rejoin after. So it creates more work for about the same amount of drag. Now, of course, there's a trade-off. If you made it three foot tall, it's just gonna be drag, right? With no, no benefit, right? So it's all by degree. Um, but it's a way to make the wing, quote, bigger. And uh, you can thank uh, some of our Ex old time racers, uh, Dan Gurney is where where the Gurney flag came from. He figured it out and put it on his race cars and was winning because of it because it still met the rules for how big the wing could be. And there you go. I, yeah, I was amazed at how subtle. Um, one of my friends, Ryan, has a GT3 RS and he put one on his car. I think it's just like what some double sided tape or something yeah. or some sticky yeah. thing. It's it's and not he, a lot of force on the parts themselves. So they don't need to be bolted to the car. Right. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So that's dive planes, you know, stuff like that. There's some more subtle stuff we can do underneath the car. We're going to take a look at the diffuser quite a bit on the new 992. Yeah. You know, yes. The one I saw at the dealer is definitely significantly different. Absolutely. So we're going to, we'll, we'll quantify all that and do all the suspension goodies. We're going to do uh, suspension arms for, uh, the 992 GT3 because there's a lot of rubber put back in the car so that when they put it in the RS, they can take it back out again, right? Um, so that you'll buy an RS. They know what they're uh, doing. And the suspension uh, in the front is completely different. So a lot right. of what has been used previously is not usable now because right. the joints are different, the lengths are different, you know, number, number of aspects of the front of the car are different. So that must be pretty uh, exciting to get a hold of that then. I mean, you'll have all kinds of things. Like you say, you'll really get into it and really see. Well, it's exciting and stressful, right? Because from a business standpoint, I needed it five months ago. Right. So that when these cars got here, we could already have parts ready for guys to buy. Because right. that's pretty much all I'm hearing. When can I have a... So then the car comes in and I guess a similar thing, you look at the the engine and the whatever, how are the layouts of... Uh, just how the the current you know stock exhaust is, and figure we out. We already have we have all that scanned. We've got uh, partners in Europe that have gotten us uh, oh. stock parts from the the cars on in the uh, in France. Uh, Briege Motorsports uh, put uh, they put race headers on their their 992. We sent them a set, uh, so they got all that put on there. They were able to tune the car to deal with all of the stuff that was removed and blah, 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 and good on them. They got it all. They, we can't do that in the U.S., but they have a different set of rules over there for whatever. Fine. Um, so we have his stock exhaust here uh, at the shop already scanned, already know how we're going to route things. We don't want to start doing the CAD work until we have the car, mainly so that we can get eyeballs on it and see where it's rooting through space. How close can we get to a thing? How far away do we have to stay from a thing? That kind of stuff. Um, the engine in the 992 GT3 is essentially the engine from the Speedster. Right, right, with the individual throttle bodies different. and something, yeah. right, yeah. The, the, the throttle bodies are kind of interesting in that regard too. There's uh, seven throttle bodies in that car. Okay, why seven? 
six individual throttle bodies and the main big throttle body. Oh, so it, it's it doesn't get rid of the main the other, big throttle body. Does it feed the other six or whatever? Is it? No, a, it it uh, the the big one is there so that there's a slight pressure drop so that you can still vent um, uh, things like tank vent uh, from from your gas tank that need for emissions that need to get into the into the plenum. Uh, by having a throttle there, you have a slight pressure drop from atmosphere to inside the interest. Plenum. And you can keep things going into the engine versus just standing there and going out in the atmosphere. So that's our understanding. It also allows us a chance to improve those things. Uh, the, the power output of the 992 seems to be right around, translated from our dyno, about 450 wheel horsepower. Same as the Speedster, same as the 991.2 GT3, not so different. You know, they're saying 502 or 500, yeah. whatever. The same number. Yeah. Um, so that means that the same, the same things that we employ now on the intake side will work on the 992. And so we're excited to do that. We're also going to take a look at the ITBs, the individual throttle bodies on the car, and uh, likely put a program together to enlarge them. We have this. Would your, do you know, or uh, would the, um, air box thing work on the 992 so you gotta the i guess possibly, the bumper is a little different or whatever possibly likely no because the way air goes in through the deck lid is different than it is on the 991.2 gt3 um it is dual inlet but that's about the only similarity that and the 992 gt3 has uh what we call the touring airbox. So it has the, or a similar airbox to the touring airbox. I don't think it's exactly the same. Um, so it already is dual cone, but that doesn't mean that it's optimized for as much power as we can make. So we're gonna, we're gonna evaluate all of that from a, from a scientific way, the pressure drop across it, make sure that it can flow enough because a, uh, a naturally aspirated engine works by pressure differential. Right. Not I remember by you flow. telling me that. Yeah. I right. remember you um, educating me on, on that. Yeah. And the air box, you know, if I, if I hang on, which I don't know that I will hang on to this RS for the longer term, I could add another car to the stable. That would be something I'd be interested in, in adding to the car. But um, the, on the 991.2 RS, the air box is significant because at about 470 wheel horsepower, the 82 millimeter throttle body becomes significantly restrictive. Yeah, yeah. And you know, I'm hearing See that. On the cups. I mean, we, we take cups and we add 50 wheel horsepower to them by doing essentially what we're doing on, on the RS. Yeah. And they go from being kind of sluggish and meh to going out and dicing it up with GT3Rs and 458 Ferrari GT3 cars and all kinds of stuff without really doing much else right yeah just just not restricting all the air right and letting right. it breathe in uh, a, a little bit more one question i have to ask because i think it's near and dear on everybody's mind is you know are, are you experiencing any issues you know the whole supply chain oh my god yes. you know i mean is that is that hitting you it's daily whack-a-mole daily whack-a-mole so uh, if it's not labor force, it's COVID. If it's not COVID, it's supply. It's, you know, not, not even just for us internally, for through our supply base, right? Because right, right. we're a small manufacturer. We yep. don't make everything, right. right? I don't, I don't mine the steel or mine <laughs> right. the iron and smelt it and all this. There, right. there is something at some point we have to purchase. Right. Um, uh, we don't make our own carbon fiber, right? There are others that do this for us that are specialists in that arena. Sure. Um, and it's been, it's been a mess. It's been a hot mess. Um, we're, we're right in the midst of, uh, uh, our catalyst supplier. Um, this is like brand new. Uh, we should have gotten a, a shipment four months ago <laughs> to give you an indication of the level of, uh, uh, energy that's going into that situation right now. So 
Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I, it's not a day goes by. I probably don't read some article, uh, you know, regarding how it's affecting everybody, and and so much so that who is it now is like Walmart, Costco, Amazon, or like buying their own ships and own containers, and they're gonna like. Are they really? I hadn't heard yeah, that yet. Yeah, yeah. They're they're actually going out and they're gonna purchase or lease whatever their own shipping vessels, get the containers that they need hire the workers, hire the workers. Like, I don't know how they're going to get by, you know, the Amazon, the I can port. see that, honestly. But, you know, they have their own trucks, their own truck drivers. And they're just yep. saying, like, it, it's Screw become- this. We're going to bring it all in-house. It, it's become such a, a barrier for them, right? I mean, right. when, you know, when you're, that reliability on others is affecting, you know, this huge behemoth that you are. Mm -hmm. uh, that I thought was uh, very, very interesting. So, you know, that is- so folks out there, right, you know, Jamie's got to design and work on things for the new 992, but even the existing also products, have manufacturing you know, operations or every, everybody's, fun, everybody's, you know, right? we're all learning patience. Uh, Unfortunately, you know, yeah, you know, it's, it becomes, it becomes difficult, right? You're on the phone with somebody and they're like, yeah, I really would really love that swan neck wing. I really want one. Oh, it's about uh, nine weeks until we're going to get the next ones, we think. Right, right. Oh. I mean, well then, why don't you call me once you have it in stock? I'm like, brother, it doesn't work like that. No, if yeah. I got three more phone calls that all want it, and they got you know green uh, green presidents in the in their pocket, then they're gonna get it. If yeah. you want it, you gotta unfortunately pay for your place in line. Which that's right. Yeah, is a no, crappy. That's... I I get it. It's a crappy place to be. You don't get your toy right now. But if you but... want it these are the things you have to do, right? I mean, if you right. truly want it, I mean, if you're going to be right. patient because you can come to me nine weeks from now and it'll be nine or 10 more weeks. It'll be 10 more weeks because right. the three get, that I was get getting yourself. are already sold. I'm, I'm hearing um, uh, some of our dealers in uh, Europe are saying that guys are ordering uh, 991.2 tourings right now and being told middle of 2023 for delivery. I'm like, 18 months holy crap yeah the, uh, we have so, two two um shark blue uh gt3 sitting at the dealer here and i, I still think that the you know the tpms for inside the car still hasn't come in yet and those right. guys are chomping at the bit right just yeah, like you yeah, were yeah. you know you're chomping your car is there he can go to the showroom because they actually yeah you can see it right? right i couldn't go see mine so it's right. not as right. bad i can like right. it's out of sight out yeah. of no he can, can see it right? he, uh, he can go and see it and he's like right. How much longer? Uh, you know, they're they're don't know. parts right. aren't here yet. Yeah, that's that's a whole nother thing. Porsche parts are yeah, gosh. One of the programs we're working on, I'll I'll, I'll give you a, a bit of a scoop here. And some know this. So if you have a 997 and you needed parts for your engine, you know, a cam cover or these kinds of things, there aren't any. Really? I've, got a, I've got a friend with a 997.2 RS and he zinged it. He, he like over revved it and has uh, one of the cams uh, adjusters came out and kind of damaged the, the cam uh, housing and yada, yada, yada. And they called Porsche and they're like, yeah, we're not sure when we're going to have that right now. It's in LA no longer available. So since the Metzgers are skyrocketing in price and mm -hmm. the Metzger engines are revered, but you can't get parts for them, we're working on an electronic solution to be able to put the modern GT3 drivetrain in a 997. Wow. Plug and play fashion. Just plug it in, plug the cord in, start the car. And now wow. you've got a DFI four liter, 500 horsepower engine in the car, not a 380 right. horsepower Five, whatever it was yeah right wow so that's that's actively being is happening right now uh at the shop so we're, we're we, we've had this this idea for a while um the issue is always in the electronics trying to make all all the parts work like everything uh, but does it, is it still like the medsker engine or is it no it's no. the other engine totally it's a dgg engine so oh okay Straight out of a 991.2 RS, plug it into a 997. 
And the the reason or the idea behind it, one, is it's the ultimate power upgrade. You don't have to build a right. $80,000 four liter out of a Metzger with unobtainium parts right now. Um, and those engines are relatively inexpensive out of wrecked cars. You can find them for 30 grand. Yeah. So if you had a Metzger and you really wanted to hop it up, this is an opportunity. We're also looking at it for some of the older cup cars as well. 992 GT3 RS mm -hmm. and this upcoming, which I'm hearing somebody the other day said November release date for a GT4 RS. Mm -hmm. So what are your, do you have any speculative thoughts or anything on these two cars or what you think they will be or won't be or? Uh, the 4RS, I keep hearing rumor that it's going to have a dry sump and be more like a GT car than a Cayman. And if they do that, my opinion is they're going to limited edition it or numbered plaque it, and it will be completely ridiculously priced and unavailable to anybody who would actually drive it. Okay. My opinion. All they're right. not going to make as many of them as they could. They're going to try and... So it'll be like the Swan Song GT3 RS 4.0 um, for maybe this, this idea. Generation. Yeah, I, th I think that's the idea because we've already seen the uh, the electric Cayman Boxster yeah. prelude coming. So that this could be the, the here's the last one, fellas. This is the best one we ever made. It's finally the one that you were asking for. Don't ask for another one. <laughs> Go go beat yeah. each other up on on dollars to get yeah. It. So break out all the Benjamins, mortgage the house, and whatever if you really want to buy a can. Yeah, yeah, and then that's okay. like then you do that, and it's like <laughs> nobody's gonna drive it, right? And that's uh, me. I drive. I I hit twenty one thousand three hundred on the RS the other day. Perfect, perfect. I yeah. sold mine. I traded mine in with twelve on it. So yeah, I need to be I, driven. I, I just, it's, I love it. I mean, this car is like best car. So now GT3 RS, what, 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 I mean, we see some crazy arrow, like cup car arrow with the vents, the hood, stuff like that. Is this going to well, be a the last throw? thing that Porsche really has a knob to turn, right? If they can't keep turning up the wick, I think it might be a 4.2 liter. I think, yeah, I heard I think it, it could be bigger. There's plenty of room in the block. Like we've still got a 4.7 liter program that we're, we're messing around with. Um, same block. There's lots of room. You just put slightly bigger pistons in it. You're done. 4.2 easy. Okay. Uh, be good for their probably, probably be 550 horsepower would be my guess somewhere in there. Um, arrow is the last thing that they can really do to the car to make it, uh, to continue to bring the lap times down. Right. Right. Active arrow, which we've seen on the car, it has a yep. the, the gurney flap I was talking about. Yep. That's what we're talking about. So it has a gurney flap on it that goes from closed to open. So more downforce, more drag, open. Now you're going to go fast on the straightaway because you got less drag, but you don't need the downforce. Time to turn, close it, go around the corner, open it, yada, yada, yada. So little tricks like this. Um, I think that car is going to be absurdly expensive. GT and and I'm I'm showing my age here when I say these numbers. The 992 GT3 that I bought that was a medium spec was a hundred and ninety thousand dollar car. That's a that's a big number for a GT car in my eyes. That's a big number, right? The the 718 that we bought before that was a hundred and twenty two thousand dollar car. GT4 RS guaranteed is a two hundred plus car. I think the GT3 RS is probably, I mean, we already saw when 991.2s were out, 220 stickers, 230 stickers yeah, for yeah, the for the dot two RS. I'm figuring 250, 270. I'm thinking 280 to 300. Oh, okay. Because they can. And the market right now, too, depending on what happens to this whole, you know, you know, just what's going on, like you said, right. because they can too. Right. Uh, I, I gotta think they're they're not gonna, yeah. Some guy the other day, I think he said on Rentless that, you know, oh, you want to get a GT3 RS, probably going to be 100,000 uh, ADM. <laughs> it's like, what? What's crazy is I, I saw on Facebook one sold for that in Orlando. It was 300 grand and they sold it. I'm like, like, 
What? Well, shoot, you guys, I've signed a document. I'll sell you mine when I'm done with it for 300 grand. I'll go, go buy my Ferrari. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, it's it's crazy. So yeah, we'll see what happens. I mean, I think the GT3 RS is still out a bit, maybe next spring, maybe even later than that. It, um, with all the delays, they have to be able to make it. Yeah, right? I mean, and to have so, three three GT cars, like if they release this, they have the 992, they still have the touring to do, and then they release this, GT4 RS, if it's a halo car, a limited number, I guess, okay. But then the GT3 RS, I, I just, I mean, trying to manufacture all those at the same time. Um, yeah, my curious. plan is to make it so that the 992 GT3 owners don't need to buy an RS, that the performance is already there from the things that we've added to it. Yeah, I mean, the GT3 RS, I mean, that wing is like, it's ridiculous. Not saying that I, you know, I'm, I love ridiculous things, but yeah. it's, uh, and how much of it is, like, if you're not on track, it, you know, how much of it is right. really usable, is, I guess. Is, and arrow is always usable. That's, that's the funny part. Okay. You know, when we put, when we put all the arrow on my RS, you can feel it at 60 miles an hour. You can. You can absolutely feel the difference in the car at 60 miles an hour. Yes. Well, that's good to know. That's good to know. Because, I was never you really know, you, sure. You, like... It's any amount of downforce over, say, 100 pounds is something you can feel in the car as you're moving it through space. Um, the way that you know the rear grips the ground, the way the front bites, et cetera, et cetera, the stability at speed. Like, honestly, that car, um, and you've, you've probably done this, when you get over triple digits, front of the car starts to feel a little light, little sketchy. Yes. All the arrow on the car, it's just a rocket. You can go any speed you want in comfort and confidence because you're like, yep, car's solid. Solid, solid, solid. Everything's solid. So it it gets in your head. And this is, this is what we've been talking to with track drivers. The parts we make don't make you faster. You make you faster. Right. I make you more confident. Yeah, I give you more options. You yeah. get more power. Oh, no, the you car will go do a little it. deeper. Right. You the get to right. The car will do it. The car will always do it. Right? right. Put Seth in a completely bone stock car. Put you in the most modified Cup car ever. Seth's going to clean right. your clock. Sure. Right. Because he's a professional driver and he can find those limits that fast. You and I going to take a lot longer to find those limits. So the more confidence we have to go explore the limits, the faster and faster we get. No doubt. No doubt. So, I agree with that completely. Yep. Yeah. I've seen it. I've experienced it. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, brother. Well, good. Take well, off. hey, I gotta take off. thanks. Yeah. Thanks for your time. Thanks for your input on those things. I appreciate uh, as always chatting with you and uh, I'll Let's be looking forward to the next time. Uh, yeah, I'll be looking forward to the 992 stuff. So I hope you found that helpful and interesting. Jamie's always fun to talk to, has a lot of good information, a lot of detail. I know I definitely learned a few things today, and I hope you did too. I just hope that the GT4 RS isn't a limited edition car, because I would love to have one. So if you like today's video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to this channel and definitely share with your friends. Um, and then stay tuned for some more. We'll probably be talking to Jamie again, maybe another six or eight months and see how progress is coming along on his 992 GT3. So thanks again for watching and stay healthy and stay safe.